Hello everyone, welcome to JavaScript course. I am Gautam, I am a certified information security expert and also a course instructor throughout this course. And JavaScript is a scripting language of the web. All modern HTML pages are using JavaScript to add functionality and also for validating inputs, communicating with web servers and much more. JavaScript is actually very easy to learn, you will enjoy it. And in this lecture, let's create a small web application that is Hello World web application which everyone does before starting a programming language. Fine. So now let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, you need a text editor. So here I'm using Notepad++. Just go ahead to Google and search this uh, thing, and you can. And it's also open source. You can download it and install that. So first of all, create us a uh, basic HTML page with head and body tag fine so now you have to write one more tag that is script so this is where you are going to write all your HK, uh, JavaScript functions objects and much more don't get confused with objects and functions you'll be learning it through this course and we'll also learn how to create your own objects add methods properties everything to it all right so first of all now just concentrate on how to uh, output a text saying hello world on the document fine to do that you need to use a function called document dot write and add two brackets there and a semicolon you have to enter the semicolon at the end of each line or the function fine so now here write to speech marks or the quotes and here you are going to write hello world fine you can write any text string numbers anything you want fine so now what it does is it just prints out this text on the body of the document go ahead and save that and run it in your browser great it says hello world fine so that's all for this lecture we'll be learning uh, complete JavaScript from scratch to object oriented programming through this course so I'll be waiting to for you in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hi in this lecture let's have a quick intro on how to create an alert box or a pop-up box on your web browser saying some uh, sentences and let's get started open up your text data and write all your HTML tags and then what you have to type is just type alert and uh, two braces and add a semicolon at the end and here you are going to write all your sentences just uh, I'll write something like this is an alert box fine uh, save it and uh, run it in your browser that's it it says this is an alert box that's all so when do you want uh, I mean why do you need this alert box like for example uh, if you want to make your uh, website very much interactive or uh, uh, something like when someone closes this tab uh, the alert box should pop up you may have seen this in most of the websites and uh, that's it uh, that's all for this lecture uh, that's a very quick intro and uh, Let's meet in the next lecture. Till then, see ya. Bye bye. Hi everyone, how's it going? In this lecture, we're gonna learn about variables. Just go back to your sixth grade classes and remember what your uh, math teacher was saying about variables. She may have said like, uh, let x is equal to be three, and uh, she may have asked you answer what's x plus three, something like that. And in JavaScript, variable means the same. We are going to assign some values to vary. Uh, variables and we are going to use that variable throughout the program and uh, so let's get started here yeah, first of all write all your uh, HTML and uh, enter script tags and first of all to define a variable you need to type var so that defines uh, that tells JavaScript that this is a variable and I'm going to use it just type var and let's name the variable as X and let's assign it to some value it may be number or a string first of all let's take an example of a number 
six and then what you have to do is just add a semicolon here uh, it just tells that the line is over and in the next line we already learned in our last lecture how to print out the values or uh, text so just type document dot write and inside the braces uh, you may write C x and uh, add a semicolon now just go ahead and save it and let's run it it should display 6 yeah and now let's take one more example let's add some number to the variable x let's add 3 save it and refresh it should give 9 yeah now let's take an example of string just go ahead and uh, delete the 6 and uh, you need to enter the string in speech marks just type uh, hello and uh, here we have x and we'll write something after hello add a plus sign and uh, let's type hello there that's quite a good welcome right save it and uh, it should display hello there yeah so this is how variables is used in JavaScript this is a very important concept and um, that's all for this lecture guys that's a very quick intro and in our next lecture let's see what we have and till then see ya bye bye hi in this lecture let's learn how to get input from the user using JavaScript but in this lecture we are not going to create any form to get the input from the user we are just going to use a simple function provided by JavaScript and let's get started open up your text editor and write all your HTML tags and then we need to save that input into some variables so let's create a variable called name and here we are going to get an input so in JavaScript we are going to use a function called prompt uh, to get the input from the user so just type prompt and uh, let's say enter your name will display that name in the body of the HTML so document dot write and then we are let's welcome that name so howdy uh, name that's it save it and run it in your browser so first of all what it does is it will pop up an input box saying enter your name so let's write our name called Gautam and uh, okay so here it says howdy Gautam that means it got the input from the user and then it saved it into a variable called name and then it displays it here and that's all guys for this lecture in the later part of this course let's see how to get an input using an HTML form so that it would be much more interactive and uh, classic uh, let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hi in this lecture let's learn about functions so basically function is a small program in which you are writing all your JavaScript codes and you are going to use that function throughout your program so the application of function is for example if you take YouTube it has a play button when you hit the play button it does some function it plays the video so that is a simple function encoded for that <coughs> play button so this is how function is used and let's see how you can create a function in JavaScript just go ahead and open up your text data and write all your HTML things first of all to create a function you need to type a keyword called function just type function and the function name let's name our function as simple and add the brackets so in this brackets you're going to enter the parameters you need to send to your function so in this lecture we'll just concentrate on how to create a simple function in our later videos let's see how to pa send parameters and pass values so once you have got this basic syntax here you are going to write all your JavaScript commands so 
we already know how to print out a text something like that but we'll make it some more interactive let's create a pop-up box in our document J to do that it's very simple in JavaScript just type alert and the brackets and the semicolon to end that inside the speech marks enter your string or the message let's type this is our simple function and so once you have done that you need to access this function just type uh, simple and the brackets and that so now you are going to access that simple once the page is loaded just save it and run it in the browser so there you go you got a alert box saying that this is a simple function so now that doesn't make any sense once the page is loaded you don't want any pop-up box that will irritate your users so let's make a much more interactive let's make a form and let's get input from the user so I hope you know how to create a form in HTML don't worry I'm going to explain all these tags again and once you have done the form inside this tag just type input and inside this input you need a type attribute let's make it equal to button so then you need a value to that button so let's make it uh, hit me right then once the person clicks on that button it has to access the function to do that you need to type an attribute called on click just type on click is equals to the function name that is simple and close the tag so that's all now save it and refresh so that does the work so now again you got a alert named as this is a simple function so in this lecture we learned how to create a function and how to create an alert pop-up and we we'll also we also learned how to get input in HTML and call the function so that's all for this lecture guys till then uh, see ya bye bye hi in this lecture we're gonna be talking about global and local variables so in our previous lecture we saw how to create a variable using the keyword var and we have also learned how to create a function but in this lecture let's see what are the different types of variables you can assign so first of all what are local variables so these local variables are the variables which are you which you are going to create inside a function and it can be accessed only by that member function and global variable means uh, these are the variables which you can access throughout the script tags that means it has no restrictions you can access it uh, inside any other function and uh, can use it all over the script tags that's all it so let's see how it works first of all open up your uh, text editor and write all your HTML tags and then let's create a global variable named uh, global and let's assign it some text like mm, am global variable. Fine. See, I have initialized this variable outside the function. Now let's create a function named uh, let's name it as print, and it's not going to take any parameters. And let's create a function named. Uh, local and let's name it as a um, local variable fine <clears throat> so now what we have to do is we need to print out that uh, variable so just type document dot right. fine so now we'll call that function and we'll also print out the global variable
fine so let's see how it works yeah so first of all it prints out uh, the local variable and then it prints out the global variable now let's see if we can access the local variable outside the function so let's write local and see if it works yeah it doesn't work because we are going to access this function I mean this variable from the main function and that's not possible because it's a local variable but you can access a global variable inside a function let's say global now it has to print out a global variable two times uh, well now it has to print out two times yeah so this is how global and local variables are initialized <coughs> and used and uh, that's all for this lecture guys let's meet in our next lecture till then see ya bye bye hey in our previous lecture we saw how to create a simple function but you have also noticed that there are two parentheses in which you are going to enter the arguments or technically called as parameters in this lecture we're gonna learn how to pass the values to that arguments and then execute the function so why are these parameters or arguments basically used let's take an example you you think you want to greet someone with his name so the name is an extra piece of information from which you're going to greet that person so you need to get that uh, extra piece of information from the main function and then from there you have to pass that value to the function to execute completely let's have a quick demonstration on it so that we can understand it much better first of all open pure text editor and write all your HTML tags and now let's create a simple function just type the function keyword and the function name let's name it as welcome and uh, here are the parentheses and now here we are going to uh, initialize the arguments so let's name the argument as name for an example and let's give an alert box to welcome the user so let's type hello and the name and uh, welcome so now you need to uh, get the value for the name so in this lecture you are also going to learn how to get the input from the user using JavaScript so first of all you need to save the value of the fun uh, name into some variable so go ahead and create a variable so let's name our variable as X and let's prompt the user just type prompt and let's ask him to enter his name enter your name and now you need to call the function so the name of the function is welcome and then you need to pass the value of X into name so name is going to take the reference value of x and it's going to execute the complete function so let's pass the value from here and that's it go ahead save it and run it to your browser and there we go we got a prompt and let's type let me type my name and yeah hello Gautam welcome so this is all we learned how to pass the values into a function and we also learned how to get the input from the user that's all for this lecture um, till then see ya bye bye hey in our previous lecture we saw how to send the arguments or pass the values into the function in this lecture we'll see how to return the value of the result in that function so basically this is used where you are creating a function for adding two numbers or any calculating function you need to return the result of the value 
so this return statement is very handy first of all open up your text editor and write the basic HTML tags and inside the script tags you need to create a function so just type function and uh, let's name our function as add numbers and let's have two parameters that's a and b and uh, let's save the value of a and b to a new variable c let's add them up and let's return the value of c and that's all now you need to print out the value of c so basically you cannot directly call the function add numbers because inside the function it's just returning the value of c and it's not printing out the value so to print out the value we have already learned we can use document dot write and inside the parentheses call the function add number and let's pass the values of 6 and 3 is good so now it should print out 9 that is 6 plus 3 let's run it in your browser and there is it so this is how return statement is used and in this lecture we saw how to do that see ya guys um, let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hey in this lecture let's learn about conditional statements such as if else and else if so you can use these conditional statements to check whether the two conditions are true or false and you can execute the functions based on the appropriate result so let's get started if we code more we can understand better so first of all open up your uh, text data and write all your HTML tags and then uh, let's take two variables for an example uh, let's name the first variable as a and let's assign it some value like uh, 6 and then let's take one more variable b and let's give it the value 8 fine so now I'll just type the syntax of the if statement so this is the syntax of the if statement and here you are going to write the condition fine so let's write the condition as if a is less than b then execute this function document dot write a is less than b fine and then let's give one more condition that is else if if this is if this condition is not I, I mean if this condition is false then it will go and check this condition let's say if a is equals to b and this is the new operator you're coming across so this is the operator which you're going uh, using for comparing two variables so what it does is it will check if a is equals to b and if it's true it will execute this function document dot write a is equals to b fine and then if that is also false and this is the last uh, condition if both are false it will execute this so that would be document dot write is greater than p fine so let's save it and see if it works save it and write it in your browser now it's printing out a is less than b cause 6 is less than 8 now let's change the value to 5 and it has to print this a is greater than b oh well I missed out a c here fine 
should work now yeah so you saw that is a is greater than p and then um, let's try this condition let's make it 5 and now it has to execute this and it does right so this is how if else if and else statements are used in JavaScript and uh, that's all for this lecture practice well let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hi in our previous lecture we saw how to use conditional statements like if else if and else and in this lecture let's create some more complex conditions basically what we are doing is we are going to include two if conditions and then execute the exact function and so let's get started so write all your HTML tags and then uh, let's have uh, two or three variables like a is equals to uh, 6 and uh, b is equals to 8 and or c is equals to 9 fine so first we'll have a if statement between a and b so if a is less than b then if a is less than b then if one more statements that is if a is again less than c then print document dot write a has got got the smallest value fine so now let's add one more if uh, b is less than c and if okay let's add else if and if b is less than c and and again one more statement if c is less than a document dot write um let's say uh, b or b is between a and uh, c fine so if both of these conditions aren't true then uh, else print out document dot write uh, let's say uh, check the values again fine and uh, let's see how it works first of all what it has to do is first it has to check if 6 is less than 9 and that's true it will enter into this function and again it checks if 6 is less than uh, sorry it was checking before 6 is less than 8 and then 6 is less than 9 and it will execute this function a is got the smallest value and if this is not true then it will come here it will check if 8 is less than 9 and that's true but c is 9 is not less than 6 so this function is ignored fine and if both of these conditions are wrong it will come here and it will execute this function that is check the values again let's see how it works save it and run it in your browser now it has to print the first function I mean the first conditional statement that is here has got the smallest value uh, let's see if, how it works if we change the values let's make it uh, 5 
so what it will do is it will come here and it checks 6 is less than 5 and that's obviously false and it will come here if it checks if 5 is less than uh, 9 that's true and uh, 9 is not less than a let's make it uh, 10 fine so let's see what it does refresh so it says B is between A and C fine so now uh, let's see how it works with this function let's make it uh, let's make it 4 or oh, no, no not 4 6 fine now uh, nothing so it says huh, it will print out nothing cause uh, what it will do is it will come to this function and uh, this function is true because 5 is less than c that is 9 and only this is statement is false and it will uh, it will execute the functions left behind so if we make it 4 or uh, if we make it uh, okay let's make it uh, 4 now it has to execute this function so here it goes so I hope you understood how this uh, statements works this is a bit complex uh, if you call it yourself it will be much more easy for you just go along with me and um, I'll provide you some lab exercises just go ahead and do that and you'll be perfect in this and that's all guys in this lecture let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hey so I got my new PC up and running with Windows 8 and it's very quite responsive and we'll be continuing all our lectures through this OS itself and with that said let's get started so open up your text editor uh, let me open up my notepad plus plus yeah okay so write all your HTML tags and um, let's get started so in this lecture we have got a switch statement uh, which is nothing but a bunch of if statements which uh, which is very much well organized and a uh, lot of other features fine so first of all let's create a web application like uh, it will ask an user to input his favorite name or the favorite movie name and then it checks the movies av available to welcome him that's all so let's create a variable called movie and uh, let's get the input from the user which we have already learned from our previous lectures so let's prompt him enter your favorite movie okay so and then add a semicolon at the end so I'll just type the syntax of the switch statement just type switch and the parentheses and create a body so we have got the body here and the parentheses here we are going to write the variable which are which we are going to uh, check with the values entered by the user so here we are going to take the movie as the variable and then we have to write the case so if movie is equals to uh, let's say Iron Man mm, Iron Man 3 fine so then add a colon not a semicolon and write what you have to do if the value is true let's type document dot write mm, let's say uh, good it's a simple statement and then let's take one more case like uh, uh, let it be uh, Italian job okay so add a colon not a semicolon and let's say hmm, yeah we have got one more statement here called break I'll tell you in a minute why you need to add that statement and then document dot 
right and say nice something like that so add a break statement again and then that's it so now let's say why you need to add the break statement see for example if the uh, if the computer is checking for an answer and it it has got an answer here that is the movie is equal to Iron Man 3 and why does it need to check all the other answers it doesn't make any sense so what this break statement means is it stops ex executing this function uh, and then it goes up to the end so and then it executes the if there are other functions inside the script tag and let's see how it works save it and uh, run it in your web browser so it has says enter your favorite movie so let me type Iron Man 3 and it says good and let me check one more thing um, let me say um, twilight it gives us nothing so we have got one more statement in switch called default so what it does is if none of these statements are true then it executes this function so let's say type document dot write please enter the correct name alright save it and refresh so let me type again twilight uh, mm, what's happening yeah M -N -T. right save it and refresh something like that and it says please enter the correct movie name so this is how switch statement works it's just a bunch of statements where everything is organized and uh, some more default uh, extra features like default and uh, that's it guys that's all for this lecture let's see what we have in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hi in this lecture let's learn about event handlers these event handlers are used to make your web page much more interactive with the user and with that said, let's get started. It will be much more easy for me to explain if I show you instead of just explaining it without any demonstration. Fine. So the first thing is event handlers can be injected anywhere in the XHTML page. So first of all, let's create an input box and let's make it a button. I hope you guys know uh, XHTML and let's make it a button and let's give it some value like saying hit me fine and now comes the event handler so here we'll use the event handler like on click there are a lot more event handlers uh, let's in this lecture let's see two event handlers and further things you have to take it as an assignment and work on it fine so here you are going to specify the thing what the browser has to do once the person clicks on this button hit me fine let's give a alert box saying uh, why did you hit me and you have to write all the strings in single quotes cause XHTML considers whatever you type in double quotes as an attribute within a tag fine so write why did fine save it and run it in your browser it says hit me and once you click that it pops up why did you hit me so basically it waits until the uh, user interacts with the browser and that's kind of a interaction thing fine so now let's look at one more event handler like uh, okay let me create an image and let me give the source as x 
and the event handler is on error. The thing it does is whenever the browser cannot find the image or the source file of the image it executes this event handler. So let's give an alert box or let's write something on the web page document or write image not okay so here you need to write all the things in single quotes image not found fine okay save it and run it in your browser it says image not found cause uh, x is not the source file of the image fine so uh, these are some of the event handlers you will come across and there are a lot more event handlers just go ahead and google it you'll find a lot more and I'll give that as an assignment you have to work on it and that's all okay so let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hello guys in this lecture let's learn about loop statements for example if you want to execute your function again and again you don't have to write the complete function once more but if you add this loop statement just before that function everything will be done by the computer for you and let's see how it does so let's get started let me open up my notepad plus plus and uh, fine first of all let's create a variable called uh, let it by i and let's assign it some value like one and then I'll write the syntax of while loop basically there are three loop statements that is while loop do while and for loop in this lecture let's learn about while loop and do while okay so create some body here fine and this is the syntax of while loop and here you are going to write the condition so let's say i is less than or equals to 5 that means the loop is going to execute 5 times and it checks whether i is less than or equals to 5 every time it executes fine let's print out some text here so document dot write and then let's say mm, this is my height line that means yeah and let's take the cursor to the next line uh, while printing the second line so this small piece of code says that the cursor should go to the next line before executing the next loop and we have to increase the value of i so we can just write i is equal to i plus one or there is one more easy method that is i plus plus this will increase the value of i by one uh, what happens if we don't add this small piece of code yes you guess it right that is there it's an infinite loop that means every time i is less than or equals to phi and this function executes again and again so this is very much important to increase the value of i now save it and run it in your browser so it says this is my first line second line third line and fourth line so now let's go ahead and take a look at what is do while and let's see what are the what is the difference between these two okay so the basic syntax is do and here you need to write the condition so that is i is less than or equals to 5 and let's see what is the difference between them save it and refresh it does the same and now if we increase the value of i let's say 6 so theoretically the function should not execute because 6 is not less than or equals to 5 but let's see what happens okay so it says this is my sixth line that means the loop is executing at least one time no matter what is the value of i let's say, say it's 56 and it does the same so this is the difference between do while and while loop and in the next lecture let's see about for loop till then see you guys bye bye hi in this lecture let's see how to create a function inside another function so basically what we are doing is we are just creating a loop or 
something like nested function here we are not going to use any other loop statements like for or while do something like that we will see that in the later part of this course but now let's see just concentrate on how to create a loop without using any loop statement but just the concept of function and let's get started first of all open up your text editor and write all your HTML tags and then uh, let's create a simple function so function and what's the name of the function let's name it as number one fine and then let number one print something like dot write and then um, let's write um, function number one so now let's create one more function and let's name it as number two and let's write let's type am function number two <coughs> so now uh, let's see if it's working so let's have to call the function right so let's call number one and then number two right so save it and run it in your browser so there we have so it says am function number one and then am function number two <clears throat> so now what you have to do is we'll call the now let's create a loop fine so what you have to do is so when it's executing the function number one it has to call function number two so just call the function number two and then when it's executing the function number two it has to execute function number one and and that's it so let's remove this function number two it's not needed and save it and let's see how it works wow that's huge and after some time JavaScript gives up so it ends here so this is how you are going to create a loop uh, using function concept so that's all for this lecture guys uh, let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya hi in our last lecture we saw how to create do while and while loops and in this lecture let's learn about one more loop statement that is for loop and let's get started so let me open up my notepad plus plus so here it is and uh, let me write the syntax right just write for and create some body here fine and uh, you are going to initialize a variable right inside the parentheses so just write i and assign it some value like uh, one and add a semicolon there and uh, one more thing you need to write uh, the condition so that is i is less than or equals to 5 and add a semicolon there and one more thing you need to write the increment or decrement operator so let's increase the value of i by 1 I have already uh, explained what does this mean uh, this is a post increment operator and uh, that will increase the value of i by 1 so let's write something write um, fine let's say hello uh, hello hi and uh, let's take the cursor to the next line so you need to write br that is a break code and that's it
so this is the basic structure of uh, for loop and uh, this is how it works and the best part is you are initializing everything here itself you are going to initialize the variable the condition and also the increment and decrement operator and uh, that's all for this lecture guys we learned how to create for loop and um, unfold your creativity and do something big fine and let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hello guys in this lecture let's talk about object oriented programming and it's one of the coolest feature of javascript so basically we have been using objects from since the beginning of this course that is document dot write and also some of the variables so in this lecture let's learn about what are these objects and what are some of its properties and we'll also see the methods in the further part of this course you will also learn how to create your own object and how to add properties into it and also methods with that said let's get started okay so let me open up my notepad plus plus and uh, Firstly, let's go ahead and create a variable. Let's name it as name and let's add some values to the uh, name. So let it be my name is Gautam, something like that. And now we'll use the properties associated with name. So just type the variable name and we need to use a dot separator or a period. Just add that and one of its properties length and add a semicolon so this is the property associated with the object or a variable name let's go ahead and print this out uh, document dot write name dot length fine save it and run it in your browser should be around 20 yeah it says it's 17 so that is the length of this string so now we learned what is the property of an object so name is an object and length is the property associated with that now let's see the what is meant by methods associated with the object so basically document document is the object and we use a dot, dot separator and write is a function I mean or it is a method associated with that object so document may be the width of the browser or uh, length something like that and write is the method associated with that so anywhere you see this two parentheses uh, basically that means it's a function or a method fine so in this lecture we learned what is this object and what are its properties and the functions or the methods associated with that in the further part of this course let's learn how to create our own object and also how to initialize them okay guys so let's meet in the next lecture take care till then see ya bye bye hi guys in our previous lecture we learned what are the objects and what are the properties associated with that and in this lecture let's learn how to create our own object and add properties into them with that said let's get started let me open up my notepad plus plus and then to create a function you need a blueprint or in technical words it's called as construct a function let's go ahead and create a function and let's create an object for computers and create some body for that in general computers will be having a processor and RAM right let's make it a processor and a RAM these are the two parameters we are going to get from the user and we need to use a special keyword called this I know it's weird but it's that and we need to use the variable we are working with that and we need to assign it the value that the user passes so user passes the processor and it will assign it to that and then we'll do the same for the RAM so what this actually does is it will take the value passed by the pro uh, user and it will assign the value of processor to the variable processor and it does the same for the RAM too 
so this is just a blueprint for the fun, uh, object so now let's go ahead and create a new object and creating an object is as simple as creating a variable go ahead and create a variable uh, let's create a new computer uh, let's name it as Dell and let's uh, to create a new object you need a keyword called new that means we are going to create a new object for the variable del and after new you need to use the uh, constructor function so that is computers right and computers needs two values or uh, it has two arguments so you need to pass two values so let's say it has got i three processor and a RAM of four gigs fine and let's create one more object say uh, Lenovo and uh, let's uh, create one more object like computers and let's say it has got uh, i5 and a gigs of uh, six gigs fine so now we have got two objects with the properties of processor and RAM. Now let's go ahead and print this out. So document dot write del dot uh, let's say RAM that is the property of the del and then let's print out one more thing. Let's say let's add a break and let's print out uh, Lenovo dot processor fine save it and run it in your browser so it says uh, 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 the RAM of the Dell is 4 gigs and the processor is i5 for Lenovo so this is how you are going to add the properties to your own objects and this is just one method of creating an object in our next lecture let's learn how to create an object in one more method alright so let's recall what we learned in this lecture we learned how to create a fun constructor function and we also used a special keyword this to assign the value entered by the user into the property of the object and we created a new object using the keyword new and uh, uh, let's learn how to create these objects in one more method and that's all for this lecture guys let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hi in our last lecture we saw how to create an object using a constructor function and in this lecture let's learn how to create an object using object initializers it's just a one line piece of code in which you can create an object and also add properties into it. Now I'll tell you where you have to use constructor function and object initializer. Constructor function should be used where you have to create an object of uh, like you have to create a 500 object something like that. And object initializers can be used where you have to create uh, just one or two objects like that. And with that said let's get started. So first of all, let me open up my notepad plus plus and then while creating an object using object initializer, you don't have to uh, write a keyword var or new. You just have to write the uh, name of the object. So let's say, let's take an example from our previous lecture. Let's say, let it be del and add an is equals to and create some body there and now let's go on adding properties into this object so first of all let's create the property processor write the name of the property and give it a value so Dell has got let's say i3 processor and while adding the next property add a separator like comma and uh, write the name of the property like RAM and add a colon and write the value so it's 4 gigs right and let's create one more object let's say Lenovo uh, this is this was which was used in the last lecture and uh, add some body there and here's the 
property and the value and a separator and one more property that is RAM with 6 gigs okay so let's go ahead and print this out just type document dot write and let's say uh, Dell processor that is the object name and its property fine so let's print out Lenovo also let's print out the RAM provided by Lenovo mm, let's add a plus sign there and the object name Lenovo dot its property fine go ahead save it and run it in your browser okay let me add a break sign there uh, break fine go ahead and run it in your browser it says Dell processor i3 and Lenovo RAM 6 so this is how you are going to create an object using object initializers and this is used whenever you are creating an object of two or three or not more than five fine so in this lecture we learned how to create an object using object initializers and how to add properties into it and in our next lecture let's learn how to create methods for an object and uh, that's all for this lecture guys let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hi in our previous lecture we saw how to create an object using object initializers and in this lecture we'll see how to add methods or functions to our own object and with that being said let's get started so let me open up my text editor and let's go ahead and create a function or a blueprint for our object so let's take an example of a person uh, in this lecture for adding methods create some body there and let it take two parameters every person has a name and age right so let it take two parameters and let's assign the value of name is equals to the uh, value entered by the user and the age also the same fine so now let's go ahead and create a new object let me say uh, let me take it my name is equals to new person and takes two parameters let's say name is equals to Gautam and uh, the age I am still 17 so it's 17 fine so now we have got a object with two parameters that is name and age now let's see how to add methods so to add method you need to create a function just like that and let's create a function to calculate the retirement uh, period fine so let's say uh, years left something like that fine so add some body there and it's not going to take any parameters because the value will be already entered by the user so let's create var is equals to num years something like that and the maximum retirement age is 65 so 65 minus this dot age fine so and once it calculates the number of years left so it has to return the value right so let's add a return statement there return num years fine so now you are going to add this function I mean you are going to associate this function with the object so to do that just type this dot uh, let's say years or say uh, years that's good and you are going to write the name of the function that is years left and the thing is you are not going to add the par parentheses here so just add a semicolon there fine I, I know that's weird but uh, they have done it like that fine now we have got an object we have got a method 
and let's go ahead and print this out so just write uh, document dot write let's take uh, the name of the object is Gautam and add a period and write the name of the property or the name of the method and here we are going to use the name of the method so just write years and since it's a method you have to add two parentheses or the brackets fine and you can also pass values or the variables through it but it's not going to take any parameters right so just leave it as it is and save it and run it in your browser uh, so it says 48 and so in this lecture we learned how to add methods to your object so let's recall it once again first of all create a blueprint for your object and create an object with the blueprint and then create a function outside the blueprint that is your left or something anything you want fine and here when it's calculating the value you need to write the uh, variables associated with the blueprint fine so once the function is done you need to associate that function uh, with the object so here you need to type uh, some name of the method and you need to associate the method with the function here it may be confusing for you because you're not going to add any parentheses I know it's weird but uh, just developers have made it like that fine so this is how it works and let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye hello everyone in this lecture let's learn about array so basically these arrays are the variables which stores multiple values let's take an example if you create five variables for five different values you have to again write five codes five lines of code to print out those values instead of that if you use an array you can do the same thing in just one line and with that said let's get started so let me open up my notepad plus plus and to create an array you have to create a variable right so let's take an example of numbers and here you have to use two keywords that is new and one more is array fine add those brackets there and one more thing if you are creating a value with an integer float or something like that you don't need to use speech marks like this and but if it's a string you have to use that so let's say it's number five and to uh, divide the values or separate the values you have to use comma so this is the first value alright and let's take one more thing let's name it as 6 and one more 8 let's take one more let it be a string say number uh, uh, number 10 fine so here what you are doing is you are creating multiple values for the array numbers right so basically what it does is number uh, computer calculates the blocks of values from 0 not from 1 remember that okay so this is the uh, 0th block and this is first second and third fine I hope you got I understood that and to access that or print the values you have to just use document dot write function and write the name of the array that is numbers and here you are going to write two uh, block brackets like that and here you are going to write the uh, number of the block so this is the zeroth block first block second and the third block fine uh, let's print out number five so I'll just add the uh, number of the block save it and run it in your browser it should say number five okay so here it says number five fine so now let's print out one more thing uh, let's print out number 10 so 0 1 2 and 3 right add 3 save it and go back refresh it says number 10 fine 
so this is how you are going to create uh, arrays uh, with your variable that's all for this lecture guys in our next lecture let's talk something more about arrays and till then see ya bye bye hi in our previous lecture we saw how to create an array and in this lecture let's learn couple of more ways of creating an array and with that said let's get started open up my notepad plus plus and uh, go ahead and create a new array um, let's create a variable first numbers and of course you are going to use the same keywords here also and unlike before we are going to write just define the number of indexes we are going to use and in simple words it's called as blocks right so before what we did is we are just going to write all the values in a single line but here we are just going to define the number of values we are going to introduce into that array so just go ahead and write numbers and remember computer counts it from zero right so let's give it the first value that is from zero zeroth index or the block uh, let's say mm, number zero that's good and you can add some more like number uh, from okay let's add one more one and number one like this you can add up to three okay so now let's go ahead and print this out just like before document write name of the array and the index let's print out the first number save it and run it in your browser go ahead and refresh this it says number one right that's the correct thing fine now let's see one more method how you are going to create this array go ahead and delete all these things and delete this index also so basically what it does is it just dynamically updates the values or the value entered by the user no matter what is the number of indexes fine so now let's go ahead and create the values to this array number just to write uh, any number of index let's take 100 and assign it some value like number 100 something like that now let's go ahead and print this out document dot write number it's numbers right 100 it should say number 100 okay save it and refresh it says number 100 that's correct right so this is how you are going to create an array so so far we learned how to create an array in three methods fine and that's all for this lecture guys in our next lecture let's see what we have until then see ya bye bye hi in this lecture let's talk about properties and methods associated with an array and basically we know that array is an object okay so with that said let's get started let me open up my notepad plus plus and let's go ahead and create an array so just create a variable like voice something like that and go ahead and create a new array okay so here just go on adding some names like Mike John of course Kalta right and var girls is equals to new array Lisa Uh, we have got uh, Jaden and one more name that would be okay, something like that okay so now let's see some of the properties one property is that that is length which you are which all the programmers commonly use okay just go ahead and type document dot write and to use the property you need to type the name of the array so just type voice dot length fine so what it does is it counts the number of elements inside the array voice and it just prints out prints it out 
length save it and run it in your browser it says 3 and that's right fine now let's uh, print out goals let me add one more something like that and it should print out it should print out 4 right save it and refresh it says 4 so now let's see some basic methods associated with an object so first we'll see the uh, commonly used method that is join so now you have to write the name of the array and a dot separator to use the method so the method is join and add two parentheses there and here you are going to write the separator so basically what it does is it joins all the elements in the array into a string or a sentence like that so let's say Mike and and John and Gautam so it has to print Mike and John and Gautam save it and refresh it says Mike and John and Gautam let's uh, give some space there more clear say yeah so Mike and John and Gautam so basically this is the separator you can also add a comma there if you just omit the separator it will automatically take a comma as the separator and it does it like that fine so this is how join function works and now let's take one more method that is concat boys dot concat and here you are going to pass the parameters uh, like girls so what it does is it adds all the elements of girls at the end of the boys fine so save it and run it in your browser it says my john gautam lisa Karen, and something yes so these are the uh, properties and methods associated with an array. There are lot more other methods and properties. Just go ahead and Google them. You'll get all those. And that's all for this lecture, guys. Let's meet in the next lecture. Till then, see ya. Bye bye. Hi. In this lecture, let's learn how to create a web application which would validate the form. I mean, uh, you might have seen in the many forms it has for password and the re-enter password those are the two input box right so basically what it does is it checks whether the uh, first password which you have entered and the second password matches or not so basically we are doing that here using JavaScript and most of the web applications uses jQuery or uh, they also use PHP but since we are learning JavaScript we need to use that alright so let's get started so let me open up my text editor and here it is fine so let's go ahead and create a form let's create a form and action is equals to uh, nothing and method is equals to post fine let me add that form I hope you guys know about I mean little about XHTML if you don't know what uh, what I am writing here just bear with me I'm going to explain all these things now we have to create an input box using the tag input and let's give it a type as text cause uh, here it will ask for the username uh, we'll just uh, make two input boxes of password fine type is equal to password so whatever you enter it will be converted into a asterisk and no one can see that you may be already knowing that fine so one more thing that is placeholder uh, basically it will show the string which you enter here on the input inside the input box so let's write enter the password something like that fine now we have to give an ID for this element let's say password underscore one fine and that's all and the tag and create one more tag I mean yeah one more input box that is type is equals to password and placeholder is equals to 
uh, re enter password something like that and id is equals to uh, make the uh, make sure that all the ids of the elements are unique and those are not repeated fine so password underscore two fine and that and create a submit button let's write input type is equals to submit and on click I mean once the user clicks on submit button it should call a function fine just leave that blank for some seconds and let's go ahead and create a function in JavaScript let's create a function function get or validate add those two brackets and some body there now we have to save the values entered by the user so let's write password underscore one is equals to uh, uh, document dot get element by ID add those two brackets there and you have to enter the uh, name of the ID in single quotes or even speech marks is fine fine so write the ID that is password one copy that because I'm too lazy fine copy that and uh, since we are getting the value add a period or a dot separator and write value so it will get the value entered by the user let's create one more variable for password 2 uh, password 2 is equals to just copy that because you know I am too lazy fine so change this to password 2 now you know what to do with these two variables just make sure uh, both are equal or both are matches uh, create a if statement there if password underscore one is equals to password underscore two fine if it's true then document or uh, let's give an alert box alert saying that good something like that fine and if not so let's create else alert mm, let's say uh, check your password something like that fine uh, save that and here you need to give the name of the function so once you click on submit button it calls the function so the function name is validate right uh, and it's not going to take any parameters there fine and almost everything is done save that and run it in your browser fine it says enter your password let me try let all right so I'll make this as text so that you can view the password what I'm entering so that uh, text and just do as text fine save that and refresh all right let me in and here also let me in. submit and it says good all right so let me try one more thing let me in something like this submit and it says check your passwords so basically how this works let's uh, recheck again what we learned today so first of all we created a form with action doing nothing so here you can also enter link like uh, action go to google.com or something like that fine hash means do nothing fine and method is push basically push is uh, because uh, uh, if you have worked with PHP uh, basically it gets some parameters into the 
web page so when we are using post method it's not going to show those parameters on the link fine and there's one more method that is get uh, so now don't just concentrate on that just concentrate on uh, the JavaScript I mean creating the functions and how you can get the elements so basically we created an input box with placeholder enter your password and this is the main thing that is ID you need to create an ID unique for all the elements fine so here it's password 1 and it's password 2 for the second input box and we created a submit button when using a event handler for calling the validate function so inside the validate function it first gets the element so here you need to see that E is capital B is capital and I is capital fine so here it got the value entered by the user and it saved it to the variable password 2 and password 1 and it then checks whether password 1 is equals to password 2 and if it's yes it gives an alert box saying good and if it's not it gives an alert box check your passwords so that's all for this lecture guys let's meet in the next lecture till then see ya bye bye